the right used trailer can be a good deal, but there are certain things you should do to make sure it's ready for the road. Jeff Johnston shows us various items you should check and repair if needed so you know that your RV is safe and ready for some fun adventures. It's not unusual for your dog or cat to break a nail, and in most cases, it's not a big problem. But then again, it could be. This week on Paws on Board, Dr. Fitch shows us how to take care of a serious broken nail correctly so your pet stays comfortable and safe until you can get to a local veterinarian. Planning on buying a travel trailer or fifth wheel? Mark Polk from RV Education 101 explains the basics about tow vehicle powertrains so you understand if your tow vehicle has the right powertrain for your towing needs. These stories and more, plus week four of our Go Power Get Powered Up contest on this week's RVing Today TV. Very few days as exciting as the first day that you bring home your new or slightly used trailer. This one is a 1996 Kit Road Ranger. The owner, Dan Mountjoy, has been going around and doing a little bit of inventorying on it to find out what has to be done to it. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's new or used, there's things that you're gonna to have to do to a trailer before you take it out for your first run. You gotta check the safety things, you gotta check the functions, make sure everything's working like it's supposed to, make sure all the parts are there and up to date. And that's what we're gonna do with this trailer. We're gonna go through it and show you just some of the most important things that we have to do. We aren't gonna cover all the, the interior fabric and curtains and all that stuff. Mainly, we're gonna be looking at things relating to safety and mobility because it doesn't much matter if the refrigerator works if you can't get the trailer to the campground and back safely. So we're gonna take a look at those things and see what it takes and go through the process of getting this little guy ready to go. The propane connection equipment on this is definitely original to the 1996 model. Uh, this is the pre, uh, you know, easy hand wheel removal ones. So we've got a pair of these guys that we're gonna install to replace these. And we also have a new auto changeover regulator. Uh, this, is, uh, this original one is an older style. Uh, it may or may not still work, but frankly, as old as it is, it's just not worth it to try and make this work. We can add one of these and it'll be good to go for a long time. We removed the cylinders to clear up access to the plumbing parts. The old regulator came off easily, but we needed washers to make the old screws fit the new model due to slightly shallower mounting holes. After removing the optional adapter fittings, the new Acme handwheel equipped hoses screw into the new regulator. The red substance is thread sealer factory pre-applied to the fittings. After assembling the parts, we cracked open the tank valve and checked for leaks with a soapy water solution. We only found one fitting that needed to be tighter. This completed the propane supply part of our once over. Next up was inspecting the brakes and associated hardware and repacking the bearings. After safely supporting the trailer frame with jack stands, we broke the lug nuts loose, raised the trailer a bit farther, and finished removing the wheels. While the brakes are used and rusty inside, the components are still functional, so we brushed the assembly out and left it as is for now. Both the bearing races and seal surfaces looked good. After repacking the wheel bearings, probably our most important step in the trailer work process, we reassembled the unit with new grease seals torqued the castle nut to spec, and carefully tapped the dust cap in place with a soft mallet. We'll check the lug nuts again after a few miles on the road. It takes a while for them to fully seat and remain tight. But there's something else kind of interesting we learned while messing around with the wheel bearings. The tires show an awful lot of tread. They seem to be in pretty good shape from a tread standpoint, but when we inspect the DOT numbers here on the sidewall, according to the numbers, this tire was manufactured in the 19th week of 1995. It's a 1996 trailer, so it's quite possible these are the original tires from the trailer. And to say that they have 
past their age of use uh, is tremendously understating it. Plus, if you look really close here, besides the fact that they have that the age indicates they're too old, you check out the sidewall here, and the cracking and corrosion on the rubber is really pretty incredible. So, uh, stop at the tire shop. That's going to solve another major problem for uh, mobility on this trailer. Before we head for the tire shop is the right time to get the weight distributing hitch properly set up. This process works best on a flat level surface, but we may do with our slightly sloped gravel driveway. Ideally, we want the hitch head adjusted so the truck and trailer are parallel or more or less in line with each other. Okay, item number one on adjusting a weight distributing hitch like this is to set the truck and the trailer more or less at the static ride height where you'd like them to be when they're going down the road. Now, both of them are sitting fairly level here. We've adjusted the, the, uh, the hitch jack until the trailer you know, looks pretty good cosmetically relative to the truck. And it's a little tough to measure on a, uh, a rough surface like this, but we'll start by inserting the jack or insert the head in there, do a test fit on it and see how it looks. And then if we have to adjust it up and down, we can work from there. We remove the two large mounting bolts and position the head up one hole in the mount. This produced the kind of truck and trailer alignment we wanted, but further adjustments may be needed after a test drive. Next, we cleaned and installed the spring bars and attached the chains to the frame mounted hangers. The bars must be tight enough to distribute the hitch weight, but not so tight that they stiffen the ride. You'll need to adjust the chain hangers with trial and error. Once it's set right, you're good. Next up, a stop at the tire shop right after these commercial messages. Stay tuned. Aquacam Tossins. So fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. It doesn't matter if you own a motorhome or small teardrop trailer, everyone can use more power. With that in mind, together with our friends at Go Power, we're holding a Get Powered Up contest with a grand prize everyone could use. A GoPower DuraCube 500 Watt Portable Power Station paired up with a 100 Watt Duralite Expansion Solar Panel. Along with the grand prize, we're also giving away five DuraPack 8 Watt Solar Portable Power Packs, one each week for five weeks. To learn more about the contest and prizes and how to enter, Visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. RVing Today is powered by Go Power. Let's continue our look at making a few modifications and adjustments to a used travel trailer to get it ready for life on the road. Next stop, a visit to a tire shop to get some new Goodyear Endurance trailer tires installed. Final step of our project today. We're here at Lewis's Tire Service in Oregon City, Oregon to install a new set of Goodyear Endurance Radial Tires. These are Goodyear's brand new trailer tires designed specifically for trailer use. Now these are made in the United States, so it's none of that imported tire stuff that you see on a lot of products. In fact, it's kind of a testimony to the original Goodyear tires that were on this trailer for in excess of 20 years that we made it all the way down here to the shop without the tires going bad on us. 
We'll show you what we're going to be doing, including balancing the tires. Very important step. As you're going about your regular maintenance procedures with your trailer, always remember to have your trailer tires balanced. Now, there's nobody riding in the trailer to feel if it's vibrating or shaking all over the place. However, with the tires balanced, you get a couple of significant advantages. One, there's a lot less vibration transmitted through the axle, the bearings, and up into the body of the trailer. It rides smoother. And number two, the tires will last a lot longer. Instead of bouncing along the ground because they're out of balance, they're going to ride smoothly. The tread has a better contact with the ground. So keep it in mind. Balance your tires in your trailer. They'll last longer. You'll never regret the investment. One of our wheels had more lateral runout than it should, so it required more weight in excess of six ounces to help it run true. The other tire and wheel combo was fine and called for approximately two ounces to balance. When you get new tires for the trailer, for the ones that are on the ground, don't forget the spare, because if you got a bad tire on the spare and you get a flat, you're taking a risk. Add the extra tire to your purchase, you won't go wrong. The new endurance tires look great on the trailer. And when we selected the size to use for the trailer, we bumped up one size from ST205 75R14 up to ST215 75R14. Now the 215 tires are a little bit larger diameter, a little bit wider, but they fit the opening just fine. They fit the wheels, obviously, and they, they don't contact the wheel well. There's plenty of clearance around here. The advantage to jumping up one size like this is that the new tires have approximately 200 pounds of extra payload capacity per tire. Or in other words, we have another 400 pounds of weight carrying capacity for, for the entire trailer on the axle. Now this doesn't change the gross axle weight rating on the trailer. It just means we have a little, little room to spare, a little bit of wiggle room as far as piling things into the trailer. And there's less chance that we're gonna be overloading the tire. However, these are the new endurance radials, so uh, we have a lot more confidence in these tires than we do on some of the, oh, imported ones that you see running around on the road today. It's a pretty smart investment for a trailer. With the tires good to go, brake lights checked, and the rest of the projects done on the trailer, it's ready to hit the road for the new camping season. A day or two of small projects can make a big difference in keeping things together and trouble-free en route to your favorite campsites. Buying a used trailer, you're always going to wind up with a certain amount of things that have to be done to it. If you're very lucky and you get one that's a turnkey operation, terrific. Otherwise, you may wind up with an older rig like this. It needs a little bit of help along the way. Once it gets done, of course, and you can be ready for relatively smooth RV sailing and head out for your first weekend knowing that you can get there and things are going to be safe. Learn more by visiting our website at rvingtoday.tv. Off the road adventure camping to luxurious full time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit ForestRiverInc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. Pause on Board is brought to you by Jones Natural Chews, American sourced and made in America. Welcome to RVing Today's Pause on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz and this is Sully. Today we're going to be discussing what you should do if your pet breaks a nail. Dogs and even cats can break their nails in a variety of ways. Some young or high energy dogs and cats like to run around and often stop and turn quickly. We usually see this when they have the zoomies. 
Some dogs will get their nails stuck between boards on a deck or even on a dock if near water. Cats can also get their nails stuck on furniture or in carpeting. <laughs> However they do it, broken nails can be a pain to deal with and usually should be taken care of as soon as possible. When a pet breaks a nail, they usually do it in such a way that the quick is exposed. The quick is the collection of nerve fibers and blood vessels that feed the nail. When this is exposed, it can be very painful. As a comparison, think of how sensitive your nail beds are. If you get something stuck under your nail, this can hurt pretty badly. Once a nail is broken, it can bleed profusely depending on the extent of the damage, and some pets won't let their owners touch the paw. Occasionally, the bleeding will stop on its own, but can start up again if the claw is disturbed when the pet runs or walks. So what should you do if you think your pet has broken a nail? First, try to keep them confined to a small area, such as a bathroom. This will keep the mess contained, but also reduce the amount of contamination to the nail. Second, grab your handy first aid kit and the necessary supplies. You'll need a nonstick dressing, gauze padding, and self-adherent wrap and scissors. Third, if your pet will let you, gently apply the nonstick dressing and then the gauze padding to the nail, and then wrap lightly with the self-adherent dressing. This can help to stop any bleeding and will keep the nail bed protected. But remember, a broken nail can be very painful, so if your pet is attempting to bite, do not wrap the paw and take them right to a vet. If you're able to wrap the paw, your pet should then be taken to a veterinarian for assessment. Sometimes there are remaining pieces of broken nail that should be removed, and your pet will often need pain medication and antibiotics for several days. Also keep in mind that if larger pieces of broken nail are still fairly attached, your pet may need some sedation to allow for safe and pain-free removal of the nail. Often we send pets home with a temporary bandage on the foot and a cone to prevent them from licking and chewing at the nail. If you already have a cone for your pet, this can be helpful to bring along on your trip. If you're not able to see a vet right away, you can keep the paw covered and keep a cone on your pet. If you have to wait until the next day, try to change the bandage at least once before then to prevent infection from a wet bandage. As a side note, we do not recommend bandaging your pet's foot with duct tape or keeping a bandage on for more than 24 hours at a time. Duct tape can be very difficult and painful to remove and is often applied too tight. Bandages that are kept on for too long often cause more harm than good and can lead to serious pain and infection. <laughs> Moral of the story, have a first aid kit and even a, I know buddy. Moral of the story, have a first aid kit and even a cone with you while traveling and keep a list of local vets on hand so your pet can be cared for quickly. Be safe and be prepared when traveling with your pets. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit rvingtoday.tv. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz, and this is Sully. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. Good job, buddy. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. When you have a Truma AquaGo instant hot water system, you can expect to make a lot of new friends. Doesn't matter if you own a motorhome or small teardrop trailer, everyone can use more power. With that in mind, together with our friends at Go Power, we're holding a Get Powered Up contest with a grand prize everyone could use a Go Power DuraCube 500 watt portable power station, paired up with a 100 watt Duralite expansion solar panel. Along with the grand prize, we're also giving away five. DuraPak 8 watt solar portable power packs, one each week for five weeks. To learn more about the contest and prizes and how to enter, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. RVing Today is powered by Go Power.
Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101 and I would like to welcome you to RV 101 Understanding Your RV. Today's topic is understanding a vehicle's powertrain and how towing affects it. Let's start right now. Let's start by explaining what a vehicle powertrain is. The powertrain on a rear wheel drive vehicle like this includes every component required to get the power from the engine to the rear axle. The vehicle's engine is rated by horsepower and torque. To get that torque to the vehicle's rear wheels requires several components in the vehicle's drive train. First, the power leaving the engine goes to the transmission. In this case, it's an automatic transmission. The transmission provides you with a variety of gear ranges based on the speed and torque for the driving conditions. Most modern day vehicles used for towing or hauling heavy loads will have a tow haul mode. If you are towing and the transmission keeps shifting in and out of gears, you can use the tow haul mode. Read your owner's manual for more information on tow haul and gear selection when towing. From the transmission, the power is delivered to the rear axle by way of the drive shaft. The axle uses a pinion and ring gear to get the power to both rear wheels. Axles come with different gear sets, which is typically referred to as the axle ratio. The axle ratio is a comparison of how many times the drive shaft rotates in relationship to how many times the rear wheels rotate. Axle ratios are expressed in numeric values. For example, a 373 to 1 axle ratio means the drive shaft or pinion gear rotates 3.73 times for each rotation of the wheels or the ring gear. The lower the numeric value is, the better the axle is for fuel economy, and the higher the numeric value is, the better the axle is for towing. Under normal driving conditions, all of these components do their individual jobs with very little stress and with operating temperatures in the normal ranges. When you add additional weight to the vehicle, like a travel trailer or fifth wheel trailer, the components we just discussed are expected to do the same job as before with the added weight and stress on the components. Let's see what happens under this scenario. With additional weight comes more heat and friction as the drive line does its job. When the coolant, oil, and fluids run hotter than normal, it's more difficult to lubricate the metal-on-metal -metal components, causing increased friction and wear. This is why truck manufacturers offer tow packages. To counter the effects of the added stress and optimize towing, a tow package offers things like a heavy-duty cooling system, engine oil coolers, and transmission coolers. Many go even further and provide an upgraded suspension system, larger brakes, a built-in trailer brake controller, and tow mirrors. And when you use the proper hitch components like a weight distributing hitch, it helps lessen the stress on the powertrain when you're towing a trailer. You can see how a tow package is designed to help deal with the added heat and stress placed on the vehicle's powertrain but possibly the most important thing we as owners can do is make sure the engine coolant, oil, fluids, and all the filters are replaced on a regular schedule. Fresh oil, fluids, and filters provide the highest degree of lubrication qualities and are the best defense against heat, friction, and stress on the powertrain components. Happy camping. For the latest up to the minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org. For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv.
This has been another fun production.